Welcome to McDaniel College. I'm here today with uh, first year men's lacrosse coach TC DiBartolo. Um, he's here leading the Green Terror program going forward. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, Lucas. How are you? Good, good. Uh, let's start off a little bit about you. Uh, when did you start playing lacrosse? Well, I started uh, back in second grade. All right. um, I remember my first practice, uh, you know, about 11, you know, little kids out there. And I really wanted to play goalie yeah. um, because they had the bigger stick. Right, right. Um, it was easier to catch the ball. Um, there was only one goalie on the field, so right. you obviously didn't have to come off, and I, yeah. I wanted to stay on the field as much as possible. And I was a little bit of a chubby kid, so <laughs> gotcha. I didn't have to run, uh, so I kind of avoided uh, that aspect of it. I didn't think I'd be stuck there for the next 20 years of playing, right, right, right. but um, it worked itself out. Awesome, awesome. And like you said, you continued playing, played college at Mount St. Mary's, and then uh, got drafted by uh, Chesapeake Bayhawks. Um, can you explain to me what was a memorable moment, either pro or collegiately? You know, I think, um, you know, I, I was so fortunate to be part of some really good teams, and we mm -hmm. got to, you know, got to go some really cool places and play in some really awesome games. Uh, but my favorite memories of playing is most certainly uh, back in college, just kind of like a Friday night scrimmage. Yeah. Um, right around this time where it's getting cool, um, you, you know, we we you know have a great scrimmage five to seven p.m. talking trash with your your best yeah. friends you know get in the car go home um you know we had a a little bit of like a like a kind of just a uh, strip mall and it was either Chinese food you know uh, pizza or subway and it just be sitting there on the curb talking about the game that we just played in and so those are probably my favorite memories of just playing the sport is just being with my friends yeah also like um, camaraderie and everything like that exactly gotcha gotcha uh, what did you notice was the biggest difference between the college and the pro game I think the biggest difference is the fact that um you know in the pros people don't know this but you really only spend you know two days a week with with oh, okay. other guys gotcha. on the team so you, know, you show up on a Wednesday. Everybody's coming out of their real jobs, if you will. Right. Um. You know, you show up. You have a practice. Go home. Back to your your normal life for you know two more days. Show up on a Friday night. Do it again. Um. Interesting thing about my experience was that I was the youngest player on the team. Okay. So I'm, I'm sitting across, you know, on a bus from a guy like Nikki Polanco or Brian Spelina, right. guys that I had their autographs when I was yeah. 11 years old when they started playing professional lacrosse. Um, so we were just at different points in our lives. They had kids. I was, you know, trying to figure out how to pay rent. Um, right, right. But, um, you know, I would say, you know, I think it's so amazing how talented a lot of those guys are in the pros because you really are just showing up and playing. Um, gotcha. And it's not sense. really yeah. that practice aspect of the game. So it's really a, a, an amazing feat that they do that they're able to put on that type of show and be playing such a competitive, you know, atmosphere. Gotcha, gotcha. And after your playing career, what made you decide to get into coaching? You know, I always wanted to be one. Um, you know, when I was in middle school, I wanted to co coach the little kids. And, you know, in high school, coach the middle schoolers. Mm -hmm. You know, in college, coach the high school kids. Um, I actually started coaching right out of college. So I was playing and coaching at the same time. Okay, gotcha. Um, I was 21 years old, coaching at Mount St. Mary's University uh, for the guy that uh, recruited me. Um, and I was full-time. It was amazing. Uh, I think I was the youngest assistant coach in Division One, But I really, really learned a ton from – you know, those first couple of years of, of really just understanding what it meant to be a college lacrosse coach and what it meant to, to give back to those young men. Okay, gotcha. Um, and you had mentioned that pros, you're only there two days a week. What did you notice about the coaching style from pros and collegially, the differences? You know, Coach Dave Cotto was the, my uh, coach um, for the Chesapeake Bayhawks. He was formerly from the University of Maryland. Okay, um, nice. So he was a tremendous coach. Uh, I think the, the biggest difference was there was a whole lot less teaching, yeah. um, but Coach Cotto did a tremendous job of really giving us that collegiate feel in a lot of ways, that experience, that camaraderie, um, the time we spent together when we were together. Mm -hmm. uh, but he was definitely very demanding. You know, you know, there was a lot of times where there was guys that would you know come and go week to week. You know, just based on the needs of the team or you know performance and such. So, uh, you know, there was a little bit of a, a more professional aspect of it. Uh, but Coach Kyle did a great job of kind of balancing it through. All right. And you uh, recently were at Gettysburg coaching. Uh, what about the McDaniel opening appeal to you? Well, you know, Gettysburg being in the same conference, the mm -hmm. Centennial Conference as McDaniel, I've been fortunate enough to, to be on the Hill, uh, I believe, three times in the, in the last, you know, six years or so. Um, and I've always loved coming here. You know, gotcha. it's, it's, it's always been a night game, you know, in April. There's actually a decent amount of you know stand, fans, you know, college kids on a weeknight game, which, yeah, is, which is rare in the Centennial Conference, I think, 
uh, in general just because of other activities going on. And they've always been, you know, very, very, um, you know, fun loving, if you yeah. will. You know, maybe not as much the opposing team, but uh, I always thought it was a beautiful school. To me, this really is a um, tremendous opportunity to, to develop the program. You know, it's in a tremendous spot with great academics. Um, one of them being education, which was my major in college, so that appeals to me um, a ton. But I think that you know we can really build something special here and provide for these young men a great experience, um, you know, on and off the field. All right. Speaking of building it, um, you guys, uh, when you're building this program, do you look for when you're recruiting? Do you look for a certain whether it's skill, character, athleticism, abilities, or a certain type of player you look for? Yeah, I think you always want to have good players, but mm-hmm. I think to to sustain a program you need to have great people um, and I, I we're fortunate enough that we have those already um, it's just kind of finding ways to to develop them a little bit better you know in the things that that are going to be the priorities of our program you know the academics the personal professional development yeah. you know the athletics aspect um, while all while always keeping in mind that you know we want them to have a great college experience and have some fun you know yeah. you know that's what this is supposed to be. Um, we just want to make sure that we keep our priorities in order. But I think the people um, aspect is going to be what pushes us to, to the next level, if you will. All right. Um, and you mentioned you had started coaching when you were with the Bayhawks. What do you think is your biggest difference in coaching style since you started? Oh, man. Um, when I first started uh, in 21, at 21, I thought I knew everything. Yeah. Uh, I realized very quickly that I didn't know anything. Um, and... I think from the people that I've gotten to work for over the years, um, they've taught me that uh, you know it really is listening first um, that's going to allow you to develop um, as a coach, as a mentor, um, as somebody that these young men look towards um, for help, um, for guidance, and, and you know for some coaching. All right, all right, and um, finally, what do you uh, look for? And then, what's your goal for the next few seasons here as you build the program at McDaniel? I think it's I think it's to provide these young men a great experience. You know, right. I mentioned before, you know, the academics, the personal, professional, and the athletics is that's what we want to give these young men as student athletes here at McDaniel. Um, but I, I obviously you want to build a winner. But I think when we start small and, and slowly bring in kind of the uh, pillars of our program and what we're going to do and how we do it here at McDaniel, that's when it'll really take off for us. And then you'll start seeing the change. But, you know, we'll be competitive. Um, I think that we'll be a little bit of a thorn in the side for a, a, a quite a few teams in this conference because there is talent here. And, yeah, and these young men have worked their, their butts off this fall. I'm really proud of them. Um, and I'm excited to see what, what, what that shows in the spring on the field. All right. Well, thank you for your time. And as the spring draws near, uh, we want to thank him and wish him the best as uh, the season uh, gets closer. Thanks, Lucas. Have a good one. You too.